Hey, thank you for joining us today for Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. I am music producer Chick with Beats. And business entrepreneur buff Breezy Gibson. <laughs> and yeah, we just really appreciate you for tuning in to rock out with us once again. And, uh, you know, we got another great show lined up for you as always. Of course, we'll have beats produced by yours truly and uh, music industry news. And, uh, yeah, I'll chat with Breezy about my trip to New York City recently. Oh, so, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, good times. Uh, it was my first time in the city. Got shown around by uh, Sign Solo, who has previously been a guest on Music Marvel. So, yeah, just tons of stuff to share that we know that you'll dig. So, make sure you stick around and we'll be back right after this. Okay. Yeah, Breezy is such a great interviewer and uh, he knows all the right questions to ask and all that good stuff. So, yeah, now we're going to chat about uh, my recent trek to the hip hop mecca of New York City. Okay, okay. So, you know, I mean, that's a one and only right there, you know, especially for the first time. And so, you know, (laughs) might as well just just crank right from the beginning. So now what was when you got off the plane, when you got off the plane and, and got out of the of the airport, what was your first vision right there outside of, you know, of course, you're with your family member and you, know, you guys were, you know, teasing and, and talking about this and happy to see each other, you know, again and so forth. OK, so then what was the first thing you noticed, though? Um, basically, just how big it was, how, how many things were um, accessible, just like <laughs> from that small view, you know, just stepping out there and seeing what was going on. It was um with ground transportation so there were so many buses you could see so much uh just buzzing and happening and uh yeah it was it was pretty exciting i had actually been to laguardia once before for a really brief layover but yeah that was my first time actually stepping outside of the airport to see uh what was going on but yeah you could just feel the energy there was like this underlying hypeness about it um, immediately, and it was kind of funny that you mentioned that. So the particular bus 
that we were waiting on, there was a woman uh, with her children that they weren't too far off from us, but they ended up getting on the same bus. And apparently she thought that she was on a shuttle. So she had stopped the bus driver was like, hey, so when do we get back to the airport? And I kept thinking if my cousin, uh, Sian Solo, hadn't been there to pick me up, I probably would have done the same thing, thinking that I might have been able to get to a different terminal. But yeah, that was one of the, the main things that I had noticed was like, there's so many choices here for wherever you want to go. Like, yeah, how do people navigate this? But, but yeah, just the energy and all the options. So coming from a place like Kalamazoo, which is, you know, kind of like a little big city. You know, we got a couple colleges here. But yeah, if you touch down at the airport, you don't see all these, you know, options for you to get on to figure out uh, how to navigate the city. Well, you know, as way back when, you know, when the Batman was was kind of, you know, on top of the real Batman was on top of Gotham City. You know, when you look at that like, uh, they used to refer to that as Metropolis, there's also enough, another word, megagopolis. Okay, the megagopolis mm. going from one city, you know, and then you can go down a block and you're in a total different city. Okay, mm. and you go up another half a mile or whatever and you're in a different city. Okay, so you can't tell by looking at the buildings, but the jurisdictions have changed. Okay, so did it take you a minute to catch up with that or realize that, hey, you know, we're no longer where we were uh, 10 minutes ago. We're in some a whole different uh, city. What was that like? Yeah, um, that's funny that you worded it that way because that's exactly how I would put it because <laughs> even without knowing exactly where the different points kind of changed off at, every single neighborhood in every borough had its own energy, its own feeling. So it's like, yeah, I might not have known where I crossed the line, but somehow it just kind of changed up a little bit. Like, okay. I'm not sure what this is, but where are we now? So, oh yeah, we crossed over into this neighborhood or that neighborhood. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, everything had its own presence. So yeah, without even seeing the welcome to such and such sign, like you could kind of feel when you were in a different area or environment. Yeah, and it was all, yeah, you know, all positive. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I gotta ask this, I gotta, while you were there, did you have a slice? Were you able to get a slice? Oh, you know what? That was on the agenda like three different times when we got so busy, I didn't actually get to get a slice. But but I did get to experience Jacob in um, Harlem. So the soul food joint where you can go and everything is $5.99 a pound. So you just load your package up and just pay $5.99 per pound. They had all the soul food you could imagine. And it was good, not like the, the, you know, sometimes you can go places where soul food is like, mm, you know, my greens don't taste like that or I don't, yeah. But that was, yeah, that was a joint. And um, so, you know, being a hip hop head, experience in New York City for the first time, I was kind of trying to fill in the backstories of some of the songs that I, you know, grew up listening to <laughs> without really knowing what it was like since I hadn't been there. But, um, yeah, between that and some of the, the not necessarily hip hop films, but things that were a part of the culture, like Strictly Business. So, yeah, as my cousin and I were walking to uh, Jacob, I was like, man, this reminded me of like the opening scene from uh, Strictly Business where, <laughs> where you know, um, Tommy Davidson was living in Harlem. It was just kind of showing that and you could see like, you know, it was just the energy was electric. Like, I feel like even as a poet, I can't really find the words to describe how, how cool that was. But yeah, I didn't get the slice, but the fact that I, I got to experience that beautiful soul food <laughs> at such an affordable price, it, yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'll get a slice okay. next trip. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And so then when you think about the title or the phrase, uh, the city that never sleeps, okay? The city mm -hmm. that never sleeps. Okay, so now what's the difference that you saw between um, 2 in the afternoon and 2 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> Not much of one, um, you know, <laughs> still kind of <laughs> the same energy. And that's another thing. So I think, you know, down there in Atlanta, you guys get to stay open later, too. But um, in Kalamazoo, everything shuts down by 2. So that's when... You know, they have to stop serving liquor, so you can't go to any kind of bar. Like, everything is just closed. 
but I noticed that there were still a lot of options in New York. And yeah, there really wasn't much difference uh, <laughs> between two and two. Um, yeah, it's legitimately the city that never sleeps. And my first night there, you know, just kind of hearing uh, the buzz of the city and different things going on. I was curious how I'd be able to sleep. And I remember having that thought before falling asleep almost immediately. But uh, yeah, by the time I actually got back to Kalamazoo, that first night, I actually had a rough time falling asleep just from hearing the sounds of the city. Like it it, uh, it became a lullaby for me. So I had to readjust uh, to Kalamazoo life, if you will. Okay, okay. Now, what was your internal feeling when you went into your first uh, vinyl shop to do some crate shopping, crate surfing. And then next thing you know, um, you see another shop. Next thing you know, you see two, three, four more shops. The next thing you know, you recognize that, that, hey, you can crate shop everywhere because the crate stores are all over the place. Yeah. Um, well, after going to that first one, well, walking into that first one, I already knew, like, okay, you're going to need a bigger box to send home. So my family, which I've, I've adopted this um, from my husband's side of the family, where when we travel, we just do the carry-ons. We don't check bags. We don't do all that. But since I love the crate big, no matter where I go, you know, I'll just take whatever I get, ship it back, call it a day. But yeah, walking into that that first store that he took me to, which was uh, Human Head. Oh my goodness. Just the environment was so cool. They had like a lot of natural sunlight coming in. They had multiple stations for you to actually listen to the records, which I rarely do. But there was one I was like, OK, let me check this out real quick at first. But I don't know. It was just so chill. And then apparently the owner was a huge Tribe Called Quest fan. So, you know, we spotted his tattoos and had some uh, good conversations about that because <laughs> we all love Tribe Called Quest. But yeah, just walking into that one, I was like, oh, this is going to be a beautiful experience. And then, um, yeah, shortly thereafter, you know, we had went to some more. It was about, I think I got to visit about four or five different shops, but I got way more records than I had actually intended. But I knew that was going to happen after <laughs> walking into the first spot. Okay, okay. Well, now, we can't go any further without giving a super, super shout out to your tour guide. So why don't you tell the folks yes. a little bit about your special tour guide that you have for your trip? <laughs> Yes, my special tour guide is uh, Sign Solo. He's an MC, he's a DJ, and um, yeah, my, my big cousin. So he, I told him you know, before I came up there, he was like, you know, let me know what you want to see. I was like, you know what, you're a hip hop head. Like, we appreciate the same things. I'm like, you know, take me to all the spots that somebody like us you know, can enjoy. Um, especially seeing New York the first time. So, you know, he did a magnificent job of that. He should be able to sell tours. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I got to see every borough and uh, check out like I said, multiple different neighborhoods within every borough. So it, it was a tremendous experience. And I worked with him recently on a new album that he just put out with uh, Majestic the God, which was another guest that we've had on the show. So make sure you check them out. Sign Solo, Majestic the God. Um, but yeah, I got to work with them on a song that they put out on Quintessential Vibes, which you can check out everywhere. Um, Sign Solo also just dropped um, with Free the Hard Way, Movements, Colors. And uh, so that's available. You can check that out on his band camp. And, but definitely make sure that you check them out, support them whenever possible, and make sure that you check out their interviews with us, just in case you've missed them previously. Okay, okay, okay. And so now, what was it like, you know, share to our listeners what it was like going through the actual avenues and whatever, where you knew or where San Sola had shown you, told mm -hmm. you uh, who used to hang out here, who used to hang out there, and, you know, what was it like relating to what you're seeing through that particular person or particular um, um, hip hop um, um, person's eyes? Yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain what that was like. That's a great question. But um, it was almost like filling in the blanks, like where you kind of hear different stories, but then somebody sets you aside and explains like, OK, this is how this happened or how this went down. So um, one of the big things that I had remember hearing was about how Jay-Z got his name, you know, <laughs> traveling the train. 
And so, you know, the time where we were actually on that stretch, and my cousin was like, yeah, this is the route that he took. And he showed me like the Marcy Project. So I was like, okay, now I get to actually see where he based his name from and the route that he would take. Um, some of the areas where they have um, put murals up. And that's one of my favorite things so far about New York City is just like the street art, the architecture, the graffiti, man. But yeah, to be able to see some of those murals where they've been put up in areas that we heard about, like it was just, yeah, it was like a museum in itself without even actually having to go to a museum, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay. And so, I mean, it really kind of gave you, or, or did it kind of give you a feeling of, of, uh, of, of, of royalty like you know when you knew mm. or when you realized that hey uh, Queen Latifah was around here <laughs> hanging out or you know there's a whole lot of folks that we can name yeah. that were in you know specific areas that you were so did any of you know did did some of the um, some of their vibe metamorph into you while you were in those spots yeah, I, I really felt like it did. Um, yeah, at that first vinyl shop, um, it's funny since you had mentioned the Queen Latifah, but <laughs> grabbing that record there that come into my house where um, I, I reference that a lot um, because most people know me for doing hip hop, which is, you know, kind of my main thing, but I like house music, electronica, some of this other stuff. So, you know, anytime people would find out that I did other genres, especially house they seem surprised but that's one of the things that i would always reference like okay well you know a lot of rappers would have house joints on their stuff so you know like remember queen latifah's coming to my house and people be like oh yeah I'm like yeah like it should make sense that this is a, a um i don't want to say like a different genre but they kind of they're parallel if you will and so yeah the fact that I knew that coming there, then that's one of the first records that I find at the first record shop that we stop at. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of that energy was there. Um, I have uh, made some music that isn't quite ready to be released yet. But um, yeah, a lot of that energy just kind of made me feel like, okay, I've got to create something with this. So I was making beats kind of here and there and just naming it after wherever I was. But yeah, it was something that was just kind of palpable. Like, even though you couldn't see it, you could just feel it. Okay, okay, okay. So now you know that this is like uh, only part one of maybe a 10 part series of you sharing your views and experiences up in the city. In the city. And so uh, like that. And so as we move on, um, um, what about any tastes actually food tastes that you came across or you were presented with while you were there? Mm. I'd, I'd have to say, you know, my mind still keeps going back to Jacob. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I mean, I've been to some yeah, soul, soul food joints that I like, but that one was, yeah. <laughs> that, that was popping. Okay. 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 All right. Well, you know, and, and so, so, so far, in chapter one, you know, you're giving you, the vibe that you're giving off uh, as uh, compared to what you experienced. I mean, that's like a, a double 10. And um, I mean, you know, you should take some of these thoughts, actually put them aside somewhere, you know, and when the day comes up for some memoirs or maybe even mm -hmm. not that day, hey, you might want to put some out now concerning <laughs> the experiences that right. you had there and, and knowing there's a lot of love in that area a lot of love and so yes. um a lot of joy as well as far as the, the forefathers and foremothers that came through you know the of, of music of entertainment of life because uh, there's a whole lot of, of of great vibes there and um you know that's a spot where you don't want to blink too long because if you blink too long, <laughs> there's stuff that you'll miss, miss out on, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a great way to put it. And um, yeah, shout out to James Nylon for uh, taking time to meet up with me while, while we were there. Got to hang out in Harlem. And yeah, so shout okay, out to well, Sign Solo, well, let's, let's, Majestic let's, to God, James Nylon. 
And the let's talk season. about James Nylon. Yeah. Let's talk about James Nylon for a hot second. Okay, so now what's up? Man, um, so we've been working together for years. Um, first through another house music label that I used to work with that was um, kind of under the um, umbrella of labels that he um, had worked with before. So yeah, that was really great to meet up with him after all these years, because I think the first track he ever actually mastered for me, I believe was in 2013. So we had kind of known each other through a mutual connection. Uh, Nigel One, uh, yeah, DJ Nigel One through Intimate Venues. And then after that label um, kind of transitioned or changed hands, uh, that's when I started working directly with James Nylon for Nylon Tracks. And so, yeah, I've got quite a few albums out <laughs> uh, through his imprint. And matter of fact, one just dropped yesterday, uh, April 8th, uh, won it. So, yeah, it's been really cool working with him, but then finally getting the time to meet face to face and um, talk about some of the things that have inspired us, and led us to where we are now. Um, yeah, it was a really, really great time and I can't wait to connect with them again, but yeah, definitely make sure that you check out Want It and, um, there's more, uh, great stuff coming out on Nylon Tracks, uh, within these next few weeks as well, because a lot of my label mates there are very, very talented. So yeah, you don't want to miss out on that at all. Well, sounds like, you know, the Nylon Tracks and you're speaking of everything there, you know, being, you know, stirred up with in a big pot, you know, you guys collaborated on a lot of great things with a lot of, of uh, skill and, and, uh, and joy as well, you know, with the beats and, you know, from the sounds and everything. So mm -hmm. <laughs> quite a time, huh, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah, a great time. Very great time. So, yeah, so many, so many stories, <laughs> but we'll save the rest for another time. <laughs> Okay, and, and one more time, can you name can you name off all the folks that you were there with that you crossed paths with while you're there on that trip? All right. Well, some of them it was more in spirit due to different things that uh, prevented us from connecting physically, but we were still very much in touch uh, while I was there. But um, first of all, my tour guide, my host, <laughs> um, San Solo, my big cousin. Uh, shout out to Majestic God. So we didn't actually connect, but still kept in touch while I was there. Um, Quartz QZ. And then, of course, getting to connect with James Nylon, <laughs> hanging out for a good deal of time at one of the great spots in Harlem. So, yeah, shout out to all of them. Quartz QZ was the one that uh, hooked me and my cousin up with the reservation at um, Beatstro, which was a really, really cool hip hop brunch spot. Uh, lots of murals and everything there. Yeah, pretty awesome. But yeah, shout out to to all of them and everybody that I didn't get a chance to connect with while I was there. But hopefully next time. Okay, well, see, you know, ladies and gents, you heard right from the source some experiences that were shared uh, to you by the one and only a chick with beats, and uh, she she makes beats not the she makes beats. Not the free kind, right? That's the <laughs> yes, <Okay>. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> a chick with beasts in the NYC. And so uh, thanks for taking that time to share with us those up and close experiences. And like we say, you know, that's only chapter one of about 10 chapters. So we got a lot <laughs> more to come. So looking forward to that. For sure. All right, we'll take a quick pause for the cause and we'll be back with music industry news right after this.
Okay, and we're back with music industry news. First off, LL Cool J is bringing Rock the Bells Festival back to Queens for a legendary day in hip hop. And this is all taken down, taking a place going down on August 6th. Um, the day long festival will be at the Forest Hills Stadium with an all star lineup. That includes Ice Cube, Lil' Kim, Rick Ross, Diggable Planets, The Diplomats, Jada Kiss, Fat Joe, Remy Ma, Scarface, Trina, Nori, and more. So, I mean, oh. right? Yeah. <laughs> if only they could have brought that up a little bit for a while. I was actually there. But yeah, oh. <laughs> that's okay. The good people of New York City, especially queensboro gets to experience this awesome thing taking place um yeah so if that's something that you're interested in you got some time to check it out get the tickets but you know this is really exciting mainly because ll cool j fought to get the brand back um since he was the one (laughs) that made rock the bells the hip-hop thing to begin with so yeah this is really cool and exciting Hey, it sounds like it. I mean, I'm <laughs> that's a heck of a lineup. I mean, you know, I would have loved to have been like a, a up on the ceiling somewhere spying down when that was all put together, phone right. calls being made or emails or texts or whatever it took to uh, make that congl- that collaboration. Oh my god! Yeah, for sure. So yeah, shout out to him for uh, yeah getting control of his brand and making it what it is. And, yeah, it's been doing really well. Matter of fact, if you don't follow uh, Rock the Bells on Instagram, I definitely recommend that. Um, great plug into the culture and uh, something cool to, to keep up with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And Capital Records UK has launched a new dance label that's called Lift Me Up Records. So their focus will be to um, cross over dance records and um, to be a home to up coming as well as established producers um it's a partnership with a belfast dj and a and r representative named connor coates who plans to lift or i'm sorry who plans to expand the lift me up brand with club nights merchandise and various other special events so you know it's kind of cool that they're branching out this way and i'm excited to see what comes forth from it because it sounds like they know specifically where they want to go and that they've got everything mapped out so i feel like this is only the first part of the news stories that we'll be sharing about them coming up here in the near future yeah well we'll keep an eye on that in year two Mm -hmm. year two to see just what's up and uh you know that's hey you know we've turned the corner that uh jam feb march april deal is almost over. Well, April just started, but I'm just saying the Jan, Feb, March deal, that's on past mm-hmm. the corner. So we're right in the uh, in, in, in the bullseye heading towards a, a successful springtime mm-hmm. and a lot of these outdoor concerts as well as indoor concerts. Just stuff is happening. Stuff is happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the second quarter already. Can you believe that? Man, time flies. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Now, this has been kind of buzzing for a while, but, um, you know, as we mentioned earlier, we had like the whole trip where I was in New York, so I didn't get a chance to talk about this um, last week. But 52,600 artists generated over $10,000 on Spotify last year. 15,140 of them uploaded their own music. So they're Man. doing it themselves. Like, I mean, that's that's a great percentage. Um, but one thing, you know, while a lot of these articles kind of circulated, you know, talking about the stats from Spotify's loud and clear website, like, oh, okay, we paid this much. That uh, that apparently there were some duplicate artists in different revenue groups. So if an artist was generating over a thousand, or I'm sorry, over a hundred thousand a year. They were also counted as generating over fifty thousand and over ten thousand. So their stats, although they appeared kind of transparent, you kind of had to read between the lines with some of that. So some of it might have been kind of well, not inflated, but it gives a different impression. But still, the fact that fifteen thousand one hundred forty of them 
or independent artist is something to celebrate in itself. And that's showing you that the landscape, um, well, I mean, it's been this way for a while, but it's still changing. Many people who actually have control over their artistry are doing it for themselves. And, you know, hey, yeah, this is just a, a landslide victory. The fact that they're able to claim this, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm always an advocate for independent artistry anytime that you get the opportunity to do it. But yeah, this is a very, very exciting stat to hear, in my opinion. Yeah, well, you know, the in this case, you can say the evolution will not be televised or the evolution will be televised. So <laughs> either one, I mean, there's a lot going on. So uh, yeah. as we always say, you know, you want to put your stick your foot in there, you know, don't just don't put your toe in there. <laughs> right. Put your old foot. Make some things happen now, okay? We yeah. wiggle in the little toe trying to say this. You're doing the whole foot in there. Step in. Make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Great way to put yep. it. All right. And Showtime released the trailer for um, another Hip Hop 50 documentary, Cypress Hill Insane in the Brain. So the documentary mm-hmm. was produced by Sony Music Entertainment and Mass Appeal. And it, it will chronicle the West Coaster's decade-long career, um, decades, multiple, by the way, um, and their influence on hip-hop and the music business in itself. So, yeah, they were one of the ones that um, they were very verbal about cannabis way before it became acceptable to do so in music. And so, yeah, this is supposed to be able to show you all this. And if you haven't checked out any of the Hip Hop 50 documentaries on showtime please do i mean it's so much information across so many different uh, levels of it one of my favorite was um actually rolling like thunder and so if you love hip-hop culture you know graffiti is a part of it and it dives into it in a way that a lot of these other documentaries haven't really covered it so not saying that they weren't great because they definitely were this was just kind of like a different level to kind of show you some of the ins and outs that um, you may not have seen someplace else so yeah so far this series has just been phenomenal so I'm excited to see uh, this upcoming one from Cypress Hill and another documentary that's coming through uh, A&E so you remember the whole A&E biography series right yes yes and I would say just guess who they approve but there's no way that you could so i won't even do that to you but <laughs> so yeah a and e just greenlit biography old dirty bastard so it's going to be a two-hour documentary about the grammy nominated musician and legendary founding member of wu-tang clan so man two hours to yeah, examine his solo career his influence on generations of fans and performers um, it's going to include never before seen personal archive footage that was shot by his wife. And um, hmm. yeah, it's going to have uh, chats with his closest friends and family, basically to show him as a man, a father and a husband, as well as an artist. So, man, an a e biography on Old Dirty Bastard or ODB, as some people prefer to call him. But I'm, I'm thrilled that this is even taking place. Of course, I want to see it. But yeah, just to acknowledge the fact that a and E is like, yeah, we definitely have to tell his story. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. So I can't wait for that. Mm-hmm. I can't either. Yeah. But, you know, just once again, to refresh, I believe I've shared this in other episodes. Um, documentaries are really, really great for people who love music, people who are actually you know, trying to make a career out of it or want to make sure that their music can be heard. Um, It's so important to uh, watch and observe the stories of the people who've been through it to see what kind of missteps can happen, what kind of downfalls can happen to let you know that, um, hey, this happens to everybody. And if you keep at it, you can eventually get to share your story the way that many of these people who are the subjects of the documentary have done. So, yes, yes, (laughs) yes. I agree wholeheartedly with that. (laughs) All right, we're going to take a quick pause for the cause and then we'll be back with round two of Music Industry News right after this. Okay.
we're back with more music industry news. Ed Sheeran uh, won the copyright lawsuit in the UK that claimed that his shape of you infringed on um, another UK artist, Sammy Switch's OY. So Sammy Switch and uh, the songwriter Ross O'Donohue launched the legal battle four years ago, and it just went into trial in London last month. But um, the verdict was delivered, you know, in Ed Sheeran's favor that, um, yeah, it didn't infringe on it. So that just took place uh, Wednesday, April 6th. And the judge said, and, you know, this is why I think it's important for independent artists to take note of this just for the record. But the judge ruled that Sheeran and his collaborators neither, and this is quotes, deliberately nor subconsciously copied the song and that the use of the first four notes of rising minor pentatonic scale for the melody is so short, simple, commonplace, and obvious in the context of the rest of the song that there's basically no way that Sheeran sought out inspiration from other songs to come up with it. So the fact that (laughs) some parts of music are just kind of natural and you just flow with it You can't say that somebody else stole it if you haven't done something so spectacular with it that it makes it obvious. So, you know, we mentioned before, like when we're paying attention to who's buying up these music catalogs and the rights to, you know, all these different songs that they're buying up the evergreen stuff, the stuff that's tried and true. But when people are using the same chords for their melody, (laughs) that makes it a little harder to say, hey, somebody ripped off my song when everybody's doing it. So, yeah, I I felt like that was a very important underlying thing there. But uh, congratulations to Sharon for winning that. Yeah, well, you know, there's a whole lot going on, as we always say, you know, you keep you keep coming up with some with the hits, the hits (laughs) of the music industry news. So this is no different. So, you know, as we always say, people who listen to this show are going to come out of the exit out of the show knowing way more than they did when they first came. Okay, so here you go. Another that's, example. That's the goal. But yeah, if, if you want your uh, intellectual property to be covered, then yeah, you got to be doing something different than what everybody else is doing. So yeah, long story yeah. short. Uh, right. And the final news story for this week. Oh, man. So, you know, I, do, I typically don't watch the Grammys. But, you know, a lot of times these stories still just kind of filter in. And I thought this one was incredibly interesting. So the TikTok viral unofficial Bridgerton musical uh, wins Grammy for Best Musical Theater Album. And this is the first time a TikTok originated project has won a Grammy. So, Mm. yeah. So Emily Bear and Abigail Barlow, they created songs that they say were inspired by the hit Netflix series Bridgerton. And so they ended up racking up millions of views on TikTok since, you know, the first part of 2021. So they were writing from the perspective of characters on the show and they used TikTok to actually solicit suggestions so they could interact with fans to see what they wanted to hear. And so they actually shared the songwriting process with the viewers and then they released songs as they were completed and eventually it added up to an album, a 15 song album that they released in September. And it won a Grammy just based off of what they were inspired of by when they were watching Bridgerton. Mm. So yeah, um, that's definitely something as an independent artist, I find <laughs> like, if you hear that, you gotta hear the possibilities that are there. You know, what is there something that you're into that you don't know other people might um uh, they might miss the crossover so like if you're a, a i don't know bluesgrass singer but maybe there's a show that you like and you could find that intersection of fans to introduce them to your music i mean the grammy is just icing on the cake for them but um just for the virility when they actually had uh shared that and how that went viral like yeah there's so many possibilities here it's it's insane so yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah, and um, I'd like to give a, a, a special shout out to my cousin Zane Gibson uh, on the uh, on the hip hop side. 
he was down there at the Grammys. Unfortunately, uh, he wasn't chosen as a winner, but we all know how that grows. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be chosen to be a winner. You can be a winner just for being in the mix. So uh, he was he was invited. He's in the mix. And so um, big shout out, shout out to him, Zane Gibson, upcoming artist that we're going to have on the show uh, in the next few weeks. So, you know, be looking up, looking out for that, too. Awesome. All right. We're going to take another pause for the cause and we'll be back before we head out. Okay.
that's a wrap for this week's edition of Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breeze Gibson. Once again, we thank you for tuning in. And uh, yeah, we really, really enjoy spending this time with you. And we're happy that you choose to spend it with us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, grow along with us as we grow because there's some great things that are, are popping. And um, so, you know, this ain't no little old penny ante uh, experience that we're sharing. <laughs> that we're sharing. We ain't no pennies around here. No penny any <laughs> stuff. Okay, so uh, yeah, we want to thank you for uh, being around to to uh, share that part, chapter one of the NYC with a chick with visa. She made a trip over her first trip mm-hmm. down into the middle of the NYC, visiting places. You know, a lot of historical um, music vibes going there whether it be hip-hop or whether it be rap or whether it be just the vibe of the oldies you know it's still all mm-hmm. there you know a lot of times you think you know the the um the essence the essence of the four of the forefathers and four mothers okay the mm-hmm. essence so i'm talking about you know we talking about uh uh the fear the, the <laughs> which uh oh my gosh i can't even get into starting <laughs> to give some of the names yeah. You know, because that was a lot. There was a lot of folks that were the forerunners of all of this. Okay, and if I yeah. give out two or three, then the rest of them will be upset. So, um, 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 <laughs> I want to, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Anyway, but uh, yeah, thanks for ch- you know chilling in with us again on this show. And so this week, a lot happening uh, next week. So stick and stay. Yes, for sure. So you know where to find us. Same time, same place. Tune in, tell a friend, and we'll see you then. Peace. Okay. Peace.